Very good. Oh, some of you came prepared. I like that. Uh, those sounds, again, that ba sound doesn't exist. What I'm doing, I have my teeth apart about that much, and I'm pressing my lips firmly together. Ba, 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 bi. And it's a natural sound. When you're a child and you're and you're, you're first learning, and this thing starts to close here, uh, what's it called? Some kind of a cap, a skull cap? What is it called? Who's a nurse in here? Who's the nurse in here? Um, no. <laughs> Anyways, over here on, the, on your head, there was a soft spot there, and, and it began to close before you, and when it started closing, each and every one of us did this. We went, ah and as it continued to close and we continued to evolve as a as a human it was closing the the, fir the other we began to develop language and the next sound we made was this a pa 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 and each of you some of you that have children probably understand that and it continued to close and, and then we got a little, we began to, to show off a little bit our language skills and we went ta 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 It's that same sound. And ka 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 ka. It's those same sounds and as it closed we developed that, those language patterns. So again, going back to the heuristic methodology. So there are, so Amiskuatsi waskahikan. Amiskuatsi waskahikan. That's what that says. You can, if you want right now, you can go grab your bannock. I'm going to take a few minutes here. There's bannock and, and coffee there. I think it's Tim Hortons because I saw Tim Hortons cups. Oh, there's tea. <coughs> Berry tea. So, those of you that want to have some tea, and there's bannock. Bannock is a Scottish word. It is not a Nehio word. Some people say bannock. Here I'm using Roman orthography to describe, when you see the letter C, it makes the, uh, the what they call a frigative. So I like that T sound. For instance, if I were to say wait, I would say T squa, T squa, wait. Uh, so the, whenever you see the C sound there, and then there is a rule for the W, it always goes to the right side of the syllabic, just as I have here. But the, and now, You can see the dot to the right there, or the minor spirit marker, the W, it always goes to the right, but the W sound is bef made before the syllabic vowel. For instance, here it's the ka. If you look over here, ka, the syllabic vowel is ah, so this one would go. 
there's the W there before this uh, uh, syllabic vowel, mi guan. So there's a few rules, and they're very simple rules. Prior to uh, contact, our system was primarily matrilineal at the least, most likely matriarchal. So the women were the ones that determined, determined our way of living. They were also the ones that knew about the, they were the ones that knew about our lineage. They always knew who the father of their children were and they were, they had societies, what we call ukichito iskwewak, means the, uh, my own interpretation, sacred, uh, sacred knowledge keepers. So they were the ones that, and uh, those societies uh, are coming back now, but of course with the advent of contact and from having been affected by a patriarchal system, uh, one of the first writings, for those of you university graduates here, you probably understand those first writings. One of the first uh, contacts that they had in the Hudson's Bay area was with the uh, Jesuits who were, who told the, uh, no, those were the, the French. I think it was the Catholics that told the, uh, the uh, locals, the men there, uh, beat your woman if they if they don't if they don't listen. And these were the women who were our political and uh, community leaders. So it was a, a system again that was uh, that was diametrically opposed and came into contact and a lot of our our roles changed and one of the things that we had as far as polity was the uh, schematic hierarchy. Uh, we had a person we called Miteo. Miteo is a, an undisputed leader, kind of like a king or a president, prime minister, prime minister of Canada or the president of the United States or the king of England. I don't know if they're a king. Who's got a king these days? What's that nice country where there's all kinds of heat and sand there? King of uh, Dubai, I think it's called. I don't know my geography very well. But like, that's what we had, our system, there was the Mitteo. And the Mitteo was groomed to be in that position. But in, cert in different circumstances, this Mitteo would yield his power to others. And then there were the blanket people. And then there were the very respected elders. And then there were ceremony people with contact and the colonization of this land, the roles of the Mitteo were eradicated, obliterated. And so were the roles of the blanket people. There are stories about them these days, but their function is no, they're no longer functional. What you see nowadays in the community are elders, and ceremony people, as far as our system is concerned. The, 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 like I said, there's no uh, blanket people nowadays, unless you go down into a place called Rocky Boy, Montana, you'll find them there. A Mateo, uh, those ones there, uh, pretty well gone. Because once, uh, as you all know, in order to conquer a people and take the land from the people, there's certain things that you need to do. The first thing you do when you're conquering people is you take away their God. 
The second thing you do is you disrupt their society. The other thing that you do is you eliminate the food source. So the buffalo here were eliminated. Our societies were disrupted and uh, done away with. And we were told that uh, we didn't have a God. So we were introduced to that God I was talking to you about, the one who booted out those two people from paradise. So we were introduced to that God under, uh, as, uh, as a uh, big bear would say, uh, we, we negotiated with a rope around our neck. And sometimes we were given these decrees at the end of the barrel of a gun. So it was very difficult for our ancestors to do anything but surrender. I remember in 1971, my father talking about uh, the system here. He said, Kispinegagi masna kekowi hu noa aho kemosu minok kamestiko no munia. If our grandfathers hadn't put their mark on that paper, genocide would have been completed by the white man. So treaty saved us in that fashion. And when they made treaties, they, again, going back to heurist, the heuristic methodology, they made treaties, they said, <clears throat> let these promises be here and f and until that time as long as the sun shines the rivers flow the green grass grows and the four winds blow a lot of people forget about the four winds blowing because i guess it doesn't fit in that pattern one two three four one two three four if you add in that the four winds blow, it's a little too too much on the stanza. But that that was those were what the uh, those ancestors agreed to. As long as the sun shines, the rivers flow, the green grass grows, and the four winds blow. So we surrendered those as this much of the topsoil and any other resources would be kept in perpetuity. The, the benefits of those resources would be, would be kept for the sake of Turtle Islanders. So uh, anything under there, any, any other resource, the only thing that we would allow for under treaties was uh, that much of topsoil. So a lot of things changed. Uh, before conquest, there was a... Right now, uh, if you go out there today, you'll, you'll see Saskatoon berries. It's ripe, they're ripe for picking right now. If you go in a couple of weeks, they'll be dry and dropping. So, the ancestors would have made sure that they were at the berry patch two weeks, I'm told, Nisui Spike, prior to the actual event. They would have been there. Uh, in a couple of months' time, we call that moon Onuti uh, Tuipisim, the mating moon in September. It's around the uh, time of the uh, autumnal equinox. On the south side over here, at uh, Strathcona Science Park is one of the places where they had a buffalo jump. That's where they, the, they would harvest the buffalo. And, and uh, they would need to be there at least two weeks because of the migratory patterns. So they'd run them off there. There was different ways, of course, to harvest the buffalo. One of the ways was to chase them into a lake. And east of here, there's a lake called Cucumber Lake. That's another place, because over there, that lake is real. I was in there one time, I went up to here, and I thought, holy cow, like I'm used to all these, these lakes with uh, beaches, you know, and it's solid. And I went in there, I just sunk into mud up to here. So that was used to harvest the buffalo 
another way was to make a uh, what uh, to make a pound which is where one of the uh, people that uh, got his name pound maker they would line up trees and make a circle kind of like a light bulb and chase the buffalo in there and harvest them that way if you missed the migratory pattern of the buffalo you would starve that winter if you missed making your way to the berry patch you you wouldn't get those essential minerals those elements from the berries antioxidants i think they're called so there's lots of things that you needed to be there before the event itself occurred a couple of uh, about a month ago there was a there's what do we call maske gupagwa uh, Labrador, Labrador tea. If you Google it, you'll see that plant. Anyway, it flowers only for two two weeks out of the year, and it has uh, it has certain minerals. One of the uh, one of the uh, the elements that it has is is a poison, strychnine. But yet we need that to balance our our body parts of it, just like we need zinc and gold in our body. Uh, antioxidants. I like that word. Uh, so, there. If you didn't, we were there uh, about a month ago. We just getting the end of it. Some of that the, the flowers were already turning brown. It was quite embarrassing, actually. I shouldn't be smiling. Uh, <laughs> and we got there just at the end of the the picking, and but we did get there. So we got we got some some uh, some for our larder for this winter. But if you didn't get there before the event, at least two weeks, you, you would miss out on all these things that were uh, a fundamental necessity for the well-being of the body. Fast forward a little while to being put on reservations uh, in, and then uh, these, there were leaders that were made, what they called chiefs that were made and they had to go and and uh, bargain barter for for things from the government from the government people and whenever they go they they get there frantically because there was always barriers and obstacles towards going to the, these meetings and going into the 20th century it, it became a joke whenever Turtle Islanders would be late, they'd say, oh, they're on Indian time. And it became a running joke. But if you take that even in its most disrespectful uh, lexicon into reality, Indian time was actually, you had to be there a long time before the actual event in order to benefit from uh, whatever the gifts that we received from the earth. But because of all these barriers that were always put in place for the people that are living on a reservation, like they always had to find money for gas in the 1960s and 70s, then that became, it became a joke. And, and, uh, a racist joke, but nonetheless a joke. And so there, there are a lot of things that, again, uh, misunderstandings as far as the experiences of Turtle Island is, is concerned. One of the misunderstandings is that we were, uh, as far as the written word is concerned, only focused on oral history. If we go here to when this was discovered, we've had a written history for at least 10,000 years. So to make that claim that we've only ever had an oral history is really erroneous. And science can prove that it's wrong, that statement that we've only ever had an oral history. We've had a, a written history. There are 44 symbols here, letters, 
syllabics. I call them spirit markers. So we understand that na that zepto. I don't think there's a zepto. It's octo actually. I like to overdo it. It's an octo second before a creator of the universe made this possible, this life. We were conceived and we were all born out of these attack. There's 30,000 words left in our language right now that are used, that are known to be used by people. Somebody called me an expert at the language. I speak probably, if I want to flatter myself, I'm almost at a junior high level speaker. I don't, I'm not a fluent speaker. I'm almost junior high level. I'm not an expert speaker. But because I've retained the articulation needed to speak the language, it sounds like I speak way up here. I don't. So there are 30,000 words uh, and that is dwindling. Another thing that's happening these days is uh, that we're, we're losing a syllable every generation. For instance, if I were to ask you this, uh, use, I want to use all the colors before I leave here. Somebody read this. Somebody who might have taken the course before. <laughs> Can't see this stuff. <laughs> Nick, the answer is right there. Nobody gets away here when, when I'm presenting, not even the elders. How did you say it? Pretty close. Tane sikia. Tane sikia. Kia is you. There's nia, kia, wia. So I'm, I'm talking to each one of you individually. This is me, nia. And then there's you, kia, you. Just one person. And then there's this one over here, this little gaffer in a green, wia. Nia, kia, wia. Kia is you. Tane se. Do you remember what that means? No. How? Tane se kia. How are you? Okay, that's what that says. How are you? Now, this, that, going back to that. Recently, this was eliminated. Now, it, was, it began to be understood. This actually, this means how. But it began to be understood as how are you. But actually, it, all it means is how. Tanese, how. Tanese, how is this? Tanese. Lately, Again, getting back to that losing a syllable per generation, this is what you see. What does this say? Tanse. Tanse. So it went from tanese to tanse. It went from tanesikia. Tanesikia ed. Then through the generation, another generation, tanesikia. Today, uh, a, a generation before us, tanese, and then today it's tanse. 
pense. So we're losing a syllable per generation. Not only are we losing some of the, the use of some of these 30,000 words, but we're also losing a syllable per generation. So our language needs a lot of help. So I can't talk about that. Yes. So what I was saying is those people that, that speak and those are the ones that are speak what Ed was talking about, high Cree, uh, primarily you'll find those, those ones are the ceremony people. Again, going back to that schematic hierarchy and what we have left. Uh, we do have Ukichikto uh, Iskwilak, and they're starting to, to, to make a, a to, uh, to make themselves show, a show of themselves nowadays. Although it's not, again, uh, one of our one of our laws is the pahte misuwan, humility. So you don't go out in public and 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 describe yourself as a uh, sacred knowledge keeper if you're a woman. I'm a sacred knowledge keeper. I'm an elder. A very I'm a very respected elder. It's, it doesn't fall in line with. I don't know where the Bahtain Mistuin is right here. It doesn't fall in line with that with our laws. Our law of the Bahtain Mistuin, our law of humility. So there are forty-four laws that go with this these forty-four spirit markers. I would suggest that perhaps you go and do some research. <laughs> You're from the city of Edmonton. <laughs> if there are no questions, I'm going to go home. <laughs>